Hi, in this lecture, we discussed the learning with error problem, which is the underlying hard problem for many lattice-based crypto systems. First, we start with, uh, we start by a detour uh, by uh, learning without errors. So uh, we assume that we're given the following parameters, a modulus Q, uh, a dimension N, and the number of samples M of the form, the inner product between some AIs, vectors of dimension N over ZQ, and a secret S. And the problem is to find S. Now, this is not a hard problem because Gaussian elimination tells us how to do this. Now, uh, let's, let's give a few details about Gaussian elimination as this will be useful for other lectures that we have coming up. So, uh, what's Ga Gaussian elimination in a nutshell consists in finding an invertible matrix uh, here of dimension M times M, such that multiplying it uh, on the left by A gives us a, a, a matrix that has an identity block and all zeros. Now, if we're able to perform that operation, then uh, the, the matrix relation that we have from the previous relation, so A times S equals B, uh, where we have here a matrix uh, vector product, then multiplying that equality on both sides by U gives us that this new matrix here is simply uh, simply has the SIs uh, here, and it's equal to U times B. So looking at U times B allows us to recover the secret. Now, uh, this matrix mu multiplication by U uh, on the left can be done in multiple steps, each step corresponding to a multiplication on the left by an invertible matrix U. So uh, first, a row swap. So imagine that we want to swap the row of index i and the row of index j. This is possible by multiplication by on the left by uh, this matrix. Now, assume that we want to multiply the row of index i by a scalar, lambda. So uh, then that is achieved by multiplication by this diagonal matrix, where the uh, coefficient of, of index i is lambda. And that gives us uh, the uh, multiplication of the, the resulting matrix has the row of index i multiply uh, by lambda. And the last is the addition of uh, uh, a row uh, by a, a scalar multiplication of another row. So for example, here, if we want to uh, replace this row by itself, uh, added to uh, lambda times this row, then we can multiply uh, on the left by this matrix, and this is what it gives us. Now, all these operations put together uh, in the right order allow us to perform Gaussian elimination. So what, that's the process. Now, of course, uh, each time that we perform an elementary operation, it's like the multiplication on the left by an invertible matrix. And in the end, the resulting U, the one we're really looking for, is just a product of them all. Now, uh, we set K from n to one, and for each k, we identify an index, uh, we will call that the pivot, such that the coefficient uh, at that index, so a row, uh, so uh, we identify the row i, and, and so at the column k, uh, this uh, index has to be invertible. Now we perform uh, an elementary operation which consists in the multiplication by the inverse of that index that creates a one in the proper, uh, uh, in that coefficient. Now we swap rows k and i to make sure that the row of index k, I mean the coefficient of, inde of index k times k is one. And then for all the other uh, rows, what we do is we uh, replace them by, by uh, themselves minus uh, their coefficient uh, uh, times rk, so effectively killing uh, all the other uh, coefficients of the row k, okay? So let's do this on an example. Assume that q equals three. Uh, this is our uh, uh, matrix. And remember what we're trying to do is solve a times s equals b. So uh, in order to do that, we also want to know what is u times b. So as we perform operations on a, such as um, uh, swapping rows, multiplying by uh, scalars, or replacing uh, a row by itself added 
uh, by a, uh, a scalar multiple of another row, we perform the same operations on B, such that at the end of the process, we have also U times B, which is what gives us S, okay? So first, uh, so first thing first, uh, we swap uh, those two rows here, but that creates a, a one in the index K equals N, and that deals with the first step of our process, okay? So now we move on to k equals two. So with k equals two, uh, we, uh, we identify this as an invertible element, for example, and we multiply it by the inverse, okay? We multiply this row by the inverse of two, and therefore we create that element one, which is going to be the pivot. And now with that, we uh, replace this row by its itself minus two times the pivot, and we replace this row by itself minus one times the pivot, okay? And that effectively kills the coefficients that are not on the diagonal, okay? So at this point, we're almost done. All we have to do is to deal with this last coefficient here, and we just multiply the last row uh, by the inverse of two, and we have u times a, is the identity. And as we've performed all these operations on B, we also have for that particular U, the result U times B. So that gives us uh, our secret S, okay? So like I said before, this is not a hard computational problem. So the question is how to turn this, this whole idea of uh, this whole learning problem into a hard one. And so the answer is to, instead of giving uh, away exact values that are inner products between AIs and S, uh, instead we give approximations of it. So we draw an, a vector of errors, and then we only give away approximations of this for a secret, uh, uh, for a secret error that we do not reveal. So the instance of the problem is M samples of this form. So the dot product of AI and S plus uh, EI, uh, where EI uh, is, a, is, is the error. Now, um, the, the error needs to be uh, drawn at random according to a certain distribution. So certain distributions uh, have the, uh, uh, had the, the value that we know certain proofs of hardness in the sense that uh, we can say the learning with error problem with this particular error distribution is at least as hard as this particular computational problem that has been studied for a long time. Now, in some applications, people use other distributions than the ones for which we know uh, a proof, and that can be okay heuristically. Now, for his, uh, historically, uh, the, the distributions that were used were uh, uh, rounded uh, Gaussians. So we're just going to um, uh, we're just going to present this for historical reasons, and then um, uh, we'll be uh, in the, the follow-up lectures, uh, we'll be using uh, potentially uh, other distributions. So um, to use a rounded Gaussian distribution, we have to first talk about the Gaussian distribution. Now, the Gaussian distribution is a continuous probability distribution. So what that means is it's given by a function that takes positive values and such that the integral of that function is one. And then the probability that a random variable following that probability distribution is greater than x is the integral between x and plus infinity uh, of, f of, that, of x dx. Now the Gaussian function is given by exponential minus x squared. Now, so uh, since that function has integral square root of pi, we can find uh, a function whose integral is one. And so that would be this parameterized by mu and sigma. So that, like I said, that integral is one, then the mu corresponds to the average and sigma the standard deviation. Now, uh, once we have that, we need to round this distribution because uh, our error terms are going to be in ZQ. So first we need to uh, fall back to a distribution on Z. So uh, to round an element, basically uh, to find the, uh, uh, oops, sorry, to find 
the uh, so we if we call x z, x sub z uh, the rounding of x where x follows the Gaussian distribution, then the probability that x sub z be n is the probability that x is between n minus one half and n plus one half. Okay, and that's just the integral between those two bounds of our uh, uh, Gaussian density function. And the following, we assume that this is a centered uh, Gaussian, so that the average is zero. Okay. Now we have now a distribution over z, but we need really uh, uh, this distribution modulo q our modulus. So what it means is whenever we have the probability, so the probability of being a congruence class modulo q is the probability of being uh, either, uh, I mean, is the, 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 the probability of being one of the many elements in that congruence class modulo q. So what that means concretely is that this uh, uh, random variable, which is basically x sub z reduced mod q, we say that we fall on the congruence class of a if x sub z falls on a plus k q for any k in z. So that's the sum of all for all possible k's of the probability that x sub z is uh, a plus q uh, k q, and that's the sum of all the integrals uh, of those uh, g's uh, between the right bounds. Okay. Now we can make a a, 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 a change of variable to turn this into uh, an integral of one function between those two bounds, a minus one half and a plus one half, uh, if uh, we define this function here, okay? For by uh, parameterized by sigma and by q. So what that tells us is that we know how from the Gaussian distribution, we know how to turn, we know how to define a probability distribution over zq. The goal of this, of course, is that we have, depending on the standard deviation, we have a function that is centered around zero, uh, and that is likely to have a, a I mean, for, for which uh, the outcome has a, a good likelihood of being fairly small. Now, the LWE problem, so if we use uh, that rounded Gaussian, is uh, the following. Uh, let q modulus and m and n be integers, and we're given m samples of this form, so ai, so we're giving the ai's and the inner product between i and s plus one of those errors uh, drawn from the rounded Gaussian distribution, uh, find the secret, okay? So what that means uh, concretely is that we are given approximations of linear combinations of vectors uh, by uh, the uh, vector s, so uh, um, which uh, which are secrets, huh? and we're trying to find the secret s. So um, this can be used for cryptography. The goal, of course, is to describe public key encryption schemes, but it's always a little bit easier if we start by describing a secret key encryption scheme and I mentioned quickly how to turn that secret key encryption scheme into a public key one. So here we're given parameters. So n, the dimension, q, the modulus, the distribution of the error. And uh, so we uh, assume that we choose sigma in, a, in such a way that the probability that the absolute value of ei less than q over four is high. Now, every time we mean, what we mean by that, of course, is that uh, we draw our elements uh, uh, to each uh, class, each residue class is identified by its representative between q over two and minus q over two. So there could be negative. Now we encrypt, in this particular case, we encrypt a mu between zero and one. So we draw uh, a vector uniformly at random uh, we draw the error from our uh, distribution here, uh, the rounded Gaussian, and then we produce uh, this ciphertext. So we give away A, and then we hide mu by adding it by A times S plus the error and multiplying by Q over two. Now to decrypt, assume you receive the vector A and the scalar, I mean the, the, the element B and ZQ, First, 
you remove the contribution by a times s by just uh, doing that dot pro doing that dot product and and subtracting it uh, with uh, to b, and what you get is e plus mu times q over two. So you get something that is approximately mu times q over two. And to retrieve mu, uh, well, you just look assuming that the error satisfies the promise that it was small, so less than q over four then if that element is less than q over four, that means that uh, mu is equal to one, uh, zero, and then otherwise it's mu equal to one. So we do uh, perform this rounding step in order to retrieve the message. So uh, for example, if q equals five, n equals three, and then this is the secret for message mu equals zero, we encrypt by drawing this vector, for example, at random, and then uh, an error which is in this case one. And then here is what we get. So a uh, plus, uh, so a times s plus e plus mu. So that will be four. And then to decrypt, so when we receive uh, this element here, uh, we first calculate a dot s, which is three. And then we subtract three by four and retrieve one. And since it's less than q over two, we deduce that the message was zero. Now, this decryption procedure will be the same in the public uh, key variant, it's just the encryption and the key generation that is going to be different. Now, the key observation here is that if I take two encryptions of zero and I add them together, what I get is a new encryption of zero where the vector is the sum of the two vectors that were, uh, defined, that were defining the, the original encryptions. Okay, and that's because the encryptions are linear. No, now to get a new, I mean, I suppose I get uh, many encryptions of zero and then uh, I can put them in the rows of a matrix. And now for have, to get a new encryption of zero, I can draw uh, an element that will represent the indices of, of the uh, encryptions of zero that I will be using to produce my new encryption of zero. And then I produce this new encryption of zero by multiplying on the left, uh, that matrix A, and then uh, doing all the, uh, uh, so doing a, a dot product with that same vector here uh, uh, between that vector and the Bs. So what that means here is we have a new vector A and by linearity, we have something of the form a times s plus x times e, uh, which hopefully gives us a small e, depending on how small the coefficients of uh, original vector e were. Now, for an encryption of one, we can take an encryption of zero and then adding it uh, to, uh, uh, so uh, adding it to the message times q over two. So, that was the end of our uh, uh, lecture on the learning with error problem. So in the following, uh, we will describe uh, module uh, LWE and then uh, inspect the connections with lattices. Thank you for listening.